Jamie here, Jamie here. Hope everyone's doing outstanding. October 11th, 2024, about 35 minutes to the open. Talk really quick about the market, some names I'm looking at, and go from there. But take a look at the S&P. Futures are slightly in the red here this morning. Um, similar to what happened yesterday, we had a, a slight red session chopped around at a pretty tight range. Probably going to have the same kind of chop here today. PPI data this morning came mostly in line, similar to CPI data yesterday. And now, you know, I was talking about it yesterday as well, the, there's the expectation for possible no cut at the November Fed meeting is starting to, to, to tick up. It's almost up at 20% now, chance that no, no rate cut at the November meeting um, and like an 80% chance or so of a quarter percent rate cut and a 0% chance of a, another jumbo cut. So interesting stuff nonetheless. Uh, but I finally put another support resistance line on my, my chart, another annotation at the 565 handle. That's been a key resistance on the way up and has been support since the middle of September. Uh, and then we'll have to see how things play out here today. 578 and change is the upper Bollinger Band. I think 57888. Uh, so maybe some chop here. And then we have uh, earnings. So this morning you had uh, JP Morgan and uh, Wells Fargo, strong beats, stocks are up, Black, BlackRock, another monster, uh, just trillions of, was it, trillions of dollars of um, holdings they have, and that, that continues to increase, and, uh, you know, earnings keep increasing, and uh, there's always this chat around BlackRock almost controls the market. If you look at every voting class for, for all these big companies, it's like BlackRock controls like 20% of the voting class for all the markets, but <laughs> I remember uh, many years ago, well, not many years, but everybody talked about how passive investing was the new future. Like eventually it'll just be just these ETFs, right? And no one's going to do individual stocks, but that still hasn't panned out. But either way, so five, seven, eight or so on, on the spy for possible resist on the way upside, probably some chop here. 574 and change was the lows yesterday. Hopefully that holds 574.50 we hit. So probably some chop. Um, and then the small caps, which... You know, another rough session yesterday down uh, over a half percent. Tested that 215 handle IWM one of these days, right? So I'm not going to talk too much about that. Uh, overnight, we had the a Tesla event, right? It's funny how it's just that whole conversation around Elon Musk. Either people hate him, and most people do, <laughs> or people love him, you know? So you read all these reports overnight, and it's funny. Like Routers comes out and says, uh, what, did, what was the quote? It says, his salesmanship. It says, oh, no, it says... Uh, for a businessman who perpetually struggles with broken promises, <laughs> right? I mean, that's that's the stigma associated with him. And to me, like I, I've said this for many years now, it's like if you want to be good at something, uh, you don't you don't set your goals to to be just mediocre, right? You don't just say, oh, you know, I'm going to be good at what I do. No, you you set the bar really, really, really high, and you hope you get there. But if you don't, at least at least you're making making progress so that's what Elon Musk dog does right he doesn't say hey we're gonna we're gonna produce uh the first we're gonna be the first ev uh, car manufacturer on the planet we're gonna do it in 37 years no he said he he sets the bar high right and that's and then you have that vision and you get hopefully you get other people on board and you work towards that vision to and that's how innovation happens and things like that instead all these folks in the media like to poke holes at him i mean he's a very odd character. I'm not going to go on a rant on Elon Musk for a while. Uh, but it's just funny how these things come out about the robo-taxi. I mean, who would have thought five years ago, or whatever, about these, the robo-taxi and, uh, and all the other things they're doing. They're optimists, they're robot mixing drinks and all the things. Uh, so there's things that he's not. I mean, who, who would think? It's like funny. What, what was the other part? Uh, you know, he, SpaceX. And I can go on a rant around SpaceX. I love the CEO of SpaceX. Uh, but here they are. Here's a company. Who would think there'd be a private a company founded to be able to, to be the leading launch company in the entire world, outpacing every other country. And then you have a company like Boeing who was paid by NASA. And so was SpaceX to launch uh, crafts into to the space station. And Boeing got twice as much, uh, twice as large a contract than SpaceX did. And now Boeing's only launched, launched one craft and SpaceX has to rescue the astronauts. And, so uh, the event, it seems like it's almost like a sell the news. I don't know what folks were expecting. I'm not trading Tesla. I haven't traded in quite some time. Um, I, I Probably a floor somewhere around 220. Uh, the thing is you start looking at Uber and Lyft. Those are rallying in tandem. I, again, I don't know what they were expecting, but uh, that was overnight. And then yesterday afternoon, well, noontime was AMD and AMD similar. Sell the news event. They announced two 
two, uh, well, more chips. You have the CEO, it's her 10 year anniversary. She uh, talked about the addressable market and how they're encroaching more on Intel space and what, what she's done to transform that company. I mean, I still that you start looking at AMD and if it even starts taking some of the business from Intel, some, you know, even a little bit in NVIDIA, I mean, it's, it's into the 200. So, you know, unfortunately, I, you know, I, I, of course, in hindsight, she'll lock all, all my calls in. I only have a couple left and I might look for some strikes if it bounces here today uh, for a move into the mid 170s next week. So that's, that's AMD. Uh, all right. So now let me talk quick about WW. So just another, what was up? 20, 22% yesterday, reverse morning lows all the way up over $2 in the afternoon well I'm just impressive because you take a look i mean stock was under a buck on on tuesday after before its news rallied and then just continued going wednesday and then thursday some more continuation and i was saying it on the rant yesterday in the, in the chat room just so well bid it's like there wasn't much volatility after the morning reversal and also you start looking i think it was uh uh 40 million shares traded uh and it, I believe there's 90 million shares traded yesterday and 100, no, 160, 100 and something million shares traded on Wednesday and another 90 million shares traded, 82 million traded on Thursday. The outstanding share count on Weight Watch, Weight Health, excuse me, WW is, is 79 million. So it's pretty much churned through its outstanding share count like three times in the last two days. That's like impressive. So uh, if anyone had wanted or needed a chance to get out, they did. And I think it just heads higher, but we'll have to see how today plays out. I'm not going to sit here and, uh, look to get, uh, you know, I'm not, I'm not gonna, I'll, I'll probably just hold what I have. If so, you know, I went and got the January 26 calls. And the reason I got that is because I think the premiums will hold up better as opposed to getting the April strikes. I did that rent yesterday, lock some more of the January 25s, and I'll just continue to hold those, uh, you know, and then I was looking, they had this great. Uh, Q and A on on how they're offering this uh, compounded uh, GLP one drug solution and, and what that looks like and I'm, I just I have to crunch some numbers and figure out some valuation here but I again I put on a watch list take with my WW position with a grain of salt because I've been wrong before um, and I say not wrong just early hopefully that's the case now so that's WW and you look at the longer term chart on it it was over its the last time it was over its two hundred day moving average was in the six dollar range at the start of twenty twenty four so it started this year. So 220, 227 is the 200 day moving average. It gets over that. I think more blue skies. So maybe that, and then you look over the weekend, maybe there'll be more, some, some more hype, some more FOMO. All right. So that's WW, uh, talked about AMD as well. I mean, it hit its 200 day moving average, 162.20. It hit that yesterday afternoon. Hopefully that's the reset button and it can head higher. Uh, win had two analyst uh, opt-ins today. So you have Morgan Stanley raising their price target to 112 from 102, I believe that is. And then Susquehanna took their price target from 92 to 122. So they raised it 30 bucks. Um, Las Vegas Sands, they haven't announced their date to report earnings at the end of October. Win usually does almost in the same week or the week after. So they'll probably re report earnings at the start of November. I may look for some, some more strikes to encompass the November strike. So maybe some November monthlies, 125s possibly. I, I think it heads higher over the coming uh, days and weeks. Or, I mean, if you've listened to my rants, that's been my segment already. Uh, and uh, that's when a Biogen, back-to-back -back strong sessions. It looks like it's moving higher here in the pre-market as well. Um, I, I was talking about it last week, adding some November strikes. If it, if it shows strength here, maybe it gets over 190. I'll look for some strikes to play for its earnings, uh, which will be at the end of October. So like Biogen here. Uh, universal display type Bollinger band setup was it dude sells off three and a half percent yesterday still uh still in that tight channel there so if it does so show, show some strength and bounces today could be that move finally over 220 so might look for some spec calls there in oled uh se uh, it's been almost almost i don't know like three weeks it's been trading between 94 and 96 uh but outside of the the outlier which is at the end of september when it tested 98 once that starts to go i think it's over 100 bucks the issue of premiums are elevated into earnings, but I'll be looking for some strikes to play over a move for a move over a hundred. Uh, and then last but not least, and this is Visa, and I, you know I have my my bear goggles on, right? So I'm I'm biased when I look at the chart, but it still looks like a bear flag setting up. So I, I'm, unfortunately, it didn't play out this week. But if there's weakness today, I might look for some spec puts for today, and or look for some strikes into next week to play for some protection. Um, but then we have earnings next week. And earnings, there's more banks on Tuesday. The rest of them, I think, uh, Bank of America, Citi, 
Golden Spectacular, Morgan Stanley's on Wednesday. Then you have Netflix and Tudor Surgical on Thursday. So a lot more earnings picking up, earnings season picking up next week. So should be a lot of fun. Um, also, there's a nice chart. And I think it was Ryan Dietrich. I, I followed him for a long time on FinTwit. He posted about uh, bull markets, right? So right now, I think today is the anniversary of the two-year bottom for this current bull market. So I think that was, it was the bottom. So uh, did I post it in here? I'm trying to see where it is. Did I post it in here? Uh, let's see if I can find it. No, I probably didn't. But anyway, let's see if I can pull it up. Uh, so what happened, well, historically speaking, bull markets last five and a half years. And this current bull market, we're up 60% from the bottom. But over the, over the average of five and a half years, the average move is 180%. And we're only at 60%. So does that mean there's another 120% to the upside? So uh, historically speaking, I mean, if you're just looking historically speaking wise, that's the average move. I mean, it could be more than that. I mean, well, pending any black swan event. So I always like the historical stuff because it keeps things in perspective. Uh, you start looking and saying, wow, we're at all time highs. You know, at some point we're gonna have a crazy pullback. But if you look at history, history says we have plenty more room for upside. So that's it, folks. Uh, I'll be back on audio later. Let's have a great day. Rock and roll.